Welcome and thank you for joining us for another session of Empowering You for Life Bible Study with Pastor Andrew and Holy Nation Church of Memphis. Holy Nation is a church where our vision is to evangelize the lost, disciple the believer, and empower the disciple. Located in the Raleigh Bartlett area of Memphis, Tennessee, we are an ever-growing community of believers. Get your Bibles as we study God's Word and let's get empowered for life. to Holy Nation Church of Memphis empowering you for life Bible study I'm excited about you tuning in with us today I am Pastor Andrew Propina Jr. and I thank God for you tuning in listen I want you to uh, like share and subscribe if you're on YouTube like if you're on Facebook and make sure that you have your Bibles together whether it's your and get your pen and your paper and your iPad all of that because we have a great uh, teaching today we're going to deal with the importance of prayer the importance of prayer I don't know about you but prayer is indeed it's a flying here yo my goodness the uh, prayer is very important I don't know I don't know where would I be if I could not communicate with the one that created me my father in heaven amen amen pray i pray it is important listen uh, uh call your neighbor call your friend text them email them whatever you got to do nudge them in the side and tell them uh let's get ready to learn about the importance of prayer i know everybody most of us have prayed at one time or another uh but have you ever seen any kind of season like the season that we are living in now uh, COVID-19 and uh, the pandemic, oh my God, uh, wars and rumors of wars, uh, fires and earthquakes in diverse places sound familiar, sounds like the Bible, doesn't it? Well, God has never left us. He has never failed us or fors uh, forsaken us, and he has never, check this out, lied to us. The Bible is right, and everybody else is wrong if they do not agree with the Bible. Uh, uh, so we just thank God for that. Uh, the importance of prayer. Listen, uh, I'm going to put uh, Brother Willie Roy Harris and them on, and I'm going to commit murder in a second with this fly. Y'all pray pray for me here uh, as we go forth. But listen, I thank God for you. Uh, go on and let somebody know that we are on the air as we come up with the Harris, Willie Roy Harris and the sensational Harris Brothers. Amen. <laughs> something I want to tell and it goes something like this oh Yeah. Oh, 
And I am again, Pastor Andrew Propiner, and a flies in here with me as my co-host, but we're going to get him. Y'all look the other way, but we thank God. We thank God for you. Uh, as we go forth, we are dealing with the power, the importance, rather, of prayer, the importance of prayer. So get your pen, get your paper, let somebody know that we are dealing with the importance of prayer. Prayer is very important. Amen. Donna Burnett and Margaret, all of you out there, Sister Bertie and Sandra, all of you, our family and our friends that are around here. Y'all just don't pay me any attention. I'm going to get them in a minute. Uh, uh, but um, look at that. Y'all seeing? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. But anyway, we'll get him. We'll get him. Uh-oh. First lady going to get him. Y'all look the other way now. Don't pay any attention. He's, he, he, he's going to I think a fly is supposed to live like seven days, but I hope this is his seventh day because uh, he's got to go. He's got to go. But listen, I thank God for you. the importance of prayer, and I have a little snippet I want to show you. Uh, I, I'm going to show you a little snippet before we go on because if you never knew what how important prayer is, I want you to see this right. Doctors sharing what's actually happening as the Delta variant cuts through his community. What I really wish you could see is to look into the eyes of a young father or 
a gentleman who knows that they may be short for this world because they didn't get their vaccine and the regret and remorse on their face and fear. The doctor painting that heartbreaking picture, Dr. Michael Bolden joins me now. Dr. Bolding, first of all, thank you for all that you have done throughout this pandemic. Here we are again with surging cases where you are in Arkansas. You and the other doctors and nurses are just incredible. Um, we know this is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Tell us what you're seeing, what you're hearing every day as you tend to these patients. Well, thank you for having me. I definitely represent um, thousands of very tired um, healthcare workers. I, I just literally just came from a um, patient's room in his 20s um, and it took six people to get him in a prone position um, on the ventilator um, and we are seeing 20 and 30 year olds um, dying now from a preventable illness and and it's heartbreaking we are seeing you know you you're, you can't be too healthy for this virus we are seeing people that CrossFit on Tuesday and are on a ventilator on Friday. I, I can't get the word out enough that of, of what we're seeing um, back here in these units. And to be clear, I mean, that is so sad. You're just leaving the room of a 20 something year old. And does that 20, is this person um, unvaccinated and have COVID? Just want to be clear. Yes, unvaccinated, has COVID, and no pre existing conditions. Wow. And to the extent you can talk to some of these people, what do they say to you in terms of regret? Do they talk about the misinformation that led them to not get the vaccine? What are you hearing from them directly? And that's absolutely right. Um, I think we get a little jaded in healthcare sometimes um, when we see um, some of the very loud um, vocal minority um, that are absolutely anti-vaccine. And what I have found out since um, publishing this video is I have had dozens of people personally and, and hundreds throughout our hospital ask now about the vaccine. I think there's more people that are on the fence and kind of in a gray area that have appropriate questions. I think that's why you've seen our, our vaccine rate go up in Arkansas in the last week um, because people are asking appropriate questions and we're trying to get the message uh, out there. But I see someone daily for the last three weeks that is possibly dying, certainly very sick, that asks if they can get their vaccine. And it is heartbreaking to tell them that that time has passed, um, that that was five to six weeks ago to prevent this. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? People are dying. You know, last year this time, a lot of people were passing uh, due to the COVID-19 and because there was no answer, there was no uh, vaccine uh, earlier of, of last year and nothing you could do about that. But now you have people that are actually uh, dying because of some because of what we're going to talk about tonight and that is dealing with prayer communication and miscommunication prayer communication prayers community we're going to deal with prayer and then we're going to talk about uh what the enemy does we know uh who the, our enemy is the enemy of man the enemy of you the enemy of me the enemy that does not want to see your hopes your dreams they don't want to see you grow up they don't want to see your children grow up they don't want to see you accomplish certain tasks and things of that nature the enemy the the uh, the father of lies amen so check this out uh when we you know uh, in our society today we have uh, we achieve the ability to communicate uh, with one another from vast distances. We can we can we can communicate from Earth to Mars, from over 248 miles with uh, the assistance of satellites, um, with the assistance of what is the Hubble telescope. Man can can see out to a distance of several 
billions of light years, several billions of light years. Now, to bring that into some kind of perspective, a light year is the distance that light travels in one year. You know how fast light is. And so uh, uh, the distance that it travels in one year. So several billions of light years. And outside of the obvious uh, televisions and radio technologies that we've had for a while, we communicate now uh, more than ever through Zoom calls for worship in church. We use Facebook, we use YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other digital platforms to come together, to come together. So man has come, uh, become quite uh, ingenious in ways to communicate. Uh, we have uh, come a long way from smoke signals. Y'all remember the sm Indian smoke signals, reflecting mirrors, get the mirror in the sunlight and give you a little uh, a code, uh, sounds of the drums from our motherland, let the drums talk to talk about what's going on and telegraphs and things of that nature. Out of all the creatures that, that, cre that were created, God gave you, he gave me, he gave man several gifts and abilities uh, that he did not give uh, other creatures. He gave man a will or the ability to choose along with the ability to communicate. He gave you the, the ability, he gave, gave us the ability to choose and the ability to communicate. An uh, animal does not have the ability to choose or have a will, it's going to do what it was designed to do. You don't have to ever get up and do what you were designed to do. God has given you gifts and talents and purpose things uh, before the foundation of the world, but you don't ever have to get up to do it because why? You have a will. You can choose to or you can choose not to. Either way, you have selected. Amen. And so the next one is the ability to communicate on a whole other dimension from an animal. What I mean by that is we can communicate through speech. Other animals, they can communicate in, in, in their way, in their own way, but we can communicate through speech. I, I just got through preaching uh, uh, on the power of words last week and how words can build up and words can tear down. Words can modify and make landscapes of cities beautiful and even erase them. Yes, words. We don't have to worry about the bombs. Before there was a bomb, there was a word. Hallelujah. Amen. So you, you have great potential. Uh, which lets us know why prayer is so important in the life of man. Prayer is important in your life. Put that in the chat. Prayer is important. Prayer is important. The volume is really low saying, okay, all right, let's see what's going on here. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, continue. Alrighty, we're going to see if we get it up any higher here. How about that? Is that better? I'm freezing. What about you? Y'all freezing? We haven't, oh yeah, we having some issues. We're having some issues. We're having some connection issues. We had those issues Sunday as well. The volume is really low. Good evening. All right, all right, all right. Let's see, y'all. Uh, uh, should be getting a little better. A little better, a little better, a little better. How about that? Are we getting better? Are we getting better? First lady, are we getting better? Oh, no. I'm, I'm freezing myself. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Let's see, y'all. Uh, we're gonna give me a second. Testing one, two, three. Are we all right? It may 
might be YouTube. I don't know. Hopefully that's YouTube. Facebook, you guys all right? Testing one, two, three. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay, I think it's YouTube. I'm not sure. But we're going to go on in a second. We're going to go on. Uh, Facebook. But I think it's YouTube, the one that's freezing. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank y'all. So, so prayer is important. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 3. Genesis 1 and 3. Genesis 1 and 3. <clears throat> and it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God said, Let there be light. A firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Uh, hear me say, and God said, uh -huh, that's the key word, and God said. Verse 9, and God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God said, verses 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so, verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. We're communicating, right? Uh, verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Hear me say, we need light. We need light. Put that in the chat. We need need light as 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 human beings but most of all as children of God we need light verse 20 and God said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and God says verse 24 and God said let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Let me say there's a result. There's a result. After communication, there needs to be a an instantaneous result. It, it, it may not, you may not have manifested immediately, but there should be an instantaneous result for your when you're communicating all right we are having we're crashing out here let's see uh, gosh. Uh -huh. let's see let's see let's see hold on y'all we're gonna rearrange some stuff y'all and see what happened you crashing out um okay Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. We're gonna we're gonna see what's going on with our our communication. It, isn't there something how we're teaching on communication, and and we are having problems with communication? The devil is a lie. I tell you, I tell you, we're gonna deal with some communication. Oh, let's go back live. Come on. Let's go back live. Let's go back live. Uh, please, destination broadcasting that worship there. Save. Okay, let's come back. Let's come back. All righty. Come on, I'm gonna let you give you a chance to log back on. And we can catch up. I 
Let's see, let's see. Hey everybody, come on, log back on, that's it. We're live. give you a chance to log back on we're gonna pick back up if it keeps crashing we'll we will re-air this we'll re-air this about communication what do you think about that so now when God said in Genesis uh, and God said and those things began to happen now there was no voice necessary uh, but communication was made to the whole universe. God's uh, will, God, God communicated his will. He decreed his uh, uh, appointment and his will was followed in every instance by an immediate result. Help me say communication, communication, God's will. When you, hey, Bertia, good, uh, we're back, good to see you. Uh, when we deal with communication and God said he's in he's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and he began to articulate in Genesis uh, his will. Uh, God is not a man. He's a spirit. He's the ultimate power, the creator of the, all things that have been created. So he doesn't even have to speak as in a voice but he articulates his will. Amen. And those things those results began to happen. Uh, so communication is the exchange. Here come I'm gonna talk a little slow. Communication as it relates to uh, is the exchange of ideals, exchange of messages and information by speech, signals, and writing. Communication is the exchange. Amen, Donna, good to see you. Is the exchange of ideas uh, through uh, messages and information by speech, signals, and writing uh, with an intent of an immediate result. Remember that communication, the intent when you communicate, you're looking for an immediate result. The manifestation may not be immediate, but there needs to be some immediacy of communication as far as understanding. So communication is one of the most powerful attributes on earth, communication. Organizations and people are totally reliant and run uh, 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 because of the ability to communicate. Organizations run. Uh, uh, people are relying on communication because of the ability to communicate. Without communication, without communication, organizations would not function. Without communication, marriages would fail. Without communications, families would fade. Now stop right there. Isn't that something? So without communication, marriages would fail. Without communication, uh, families would fade. Do you see the fading of families today? Do you see fading of families? Do you see the fading, the dwindling of the, the marriage structure uh, uh, because of communications? What do you mean, Pastor? Everybody, you just start talking about the satellites and all of these things. Man has the ability to communicate what he wants to communicate. Man can communicate his will and his ideas and things of that nature. But when we began to deal with uh, of the superstructure of creation and how it should be, then that communication is what does God think about it? What does God want us to do? And so that's a whole different thing. So if communication is diminished or hampered, organizations and projects would suffer, right? Communication. If communication is hampered in any kind of way, organizations and projects, all those things will suffer. When communication is thorough, accurate, and timely. When communications are thorough, 
accurate and timely. Communication has to be thorough. It has to be clear and concise. It has to be accurate. It has to be on point. And it has to be timely. It's a seasonal thing. It has to be at that at, at the right time. The organizations, uh, when those communications are thorough, accurate, and timely, the organization or family tends to become vibrant, exciting, and effective. Amen. When communication, when everybody's on the same wavelength and everybody understands, you might not be the same, but you are unified. You are one. You are, uh, you are one in the same, but you're not the same. There, there's diversity there. There's diversity of thought, but you still, everybody understands what's going on. Communication is going on so that there will be some some vibrant, uh, exciting, and effective things going on. Communication is a, a central in any process. The communication, oh my goodness, that's, that's why the enemy, and we get into this part I want to get to, that's why the enemy, Satan, is called the father of lies because he understands the importance of communication. In wartime, one of the greatest tactics of the battle is to figure out how to disrupt your enemy's communication. That's one of the main things. How do we how do we stop them from communicating? How do we stop them uh, uh, from getting together so supplies won't get to where they need to be at the right time? Or or how do we do that? And how to protect and firewall our own communication uh, through and during uh, wartime through ciphers and codes and signals. Ciphers, codes, and signals. You you don't want the enemy to steal your code book. You don't want the enemy to understand your signals. You don't want the enemy. Uh, you, so you can't. You don't have volume. You don't have uh, speech a lot of times. But you have ciphers, codes, and signals. So uh, uh, the most of time, uh, 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 most of the time, the consume most consuming activity that any manager engages in is communication. The, the higher, the lower you are on the totem pole of work, the more you uh, 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 work with your hands, the more physical labor that you uh, 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 put forth. But the higher you go up the, 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 the work food chain, the less a uh, physical labor you exert, the less you deal with your muscles and the more you deal with the muscle of your brain and things of that, and the more you have to become uh, more skilled in communication. Executives spend uh, about 70 to 90% of their time communicating with boards and employees uh, in meetings. And, uh, I mean, what are you doing? I've been in a meeting all day. What are you doing? I've been in a meeting all day. And, 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 and people that don't understand boardroom tactics, they'll say, you're not working. Oh, y'all not. Y'all just talking. Listen, everything got here by talking. Hallelujah. You got here by talking. Your job got here by talking. Your home got here by talking. Ah, everything your skill set got here by talking because God spoke it into existence. Isn't that something? Communication. Hence uh, the need for plush conference room furniture. Oh my God, did those chairs not just big for any old reason, but those chairs are large on purpose. Those chairs are there because they spend so much time in them. So uh, you can see it uh, oh, that's so plush, and and what's going on? But no, those 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 things are plush like that for a reason because they spend uh, a, a whole lot of time sitting and 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 conversating and uh, creatively uh, 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 thinking about how things are going to go. Uh, 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 creating uh, str strategies on how to move, how to make more widgets. Amen. So what is, does this have to do with prayer, Pastor? It has a whole lot to do with prayer because prayer is uh, when we began to understand the importance of communicating with our God. 
Amen. So here's a question. What is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is defined in Webster's Dictionary as a solemn request for help or an expression of thanks to God. But, but if you said a prayer is a solemn request for help uh, or an expression of thanks to your God. A solemn uh, uh, a request for help to God or an expression of thanks to God. So prayer in the Hebrew Bible is defined as an evolve, uh, 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 evolving means of interacting with God. Mm, I like that one a little better. Prayer, prayer is, a, is, a, is an evolving means of interacting with God. Most frequently, frequently through a spontaneous individual unorganized form of petitioning and uh, or, or thanking or thanking thank you are thanking him right now oh my god I just thank God Pr prayer you just thanking God in these instances uh, they say such as with Isaac Moses Samuel and Job the act of praying is a method of changing a situation for the better when Isaac and Moses Samuel and Job the act of praying is a method of changing a situation for the better do you have a situation that you need changing for the better if you do we need to pray amen it's just like uh, that that what that clip that I showed you at the beginning uh, of the teaching dealing with COVID-19 uh, uh, the father of lies, the enemy. Uh, a lot of people, uh, they don't know whether to take the vaccine or not take the vaccine. Why? Why is that so? Uh, for some that have taken the vaccine, they say, why is that? That's so simple. Why come they don't understand that? Because, check this out, they received some more information. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, some people, you give your life to the Lord and you wonder why is it that everybody is not saved? Why is it that everybody is not at church? Why is it that everybody is not uh, uh, studying their Bible? Because they got some more information. This is war. This is, a, this is war, and what the enemy does is disrupt the communication. When you disrupt the communication, then you disrupt the supply chain. Amen? Amen. Help me say the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. God promises us in the Bible that he hears every word that we pray to him. Like, like a good parent, he's waiting, ready, and willing to listen to our worries concerns and our needs have you ever been in that point that you needed somebody just to listen uh-huh you just oh my god if i just had somebody you know because sometimes you get in a place have you ever been in that place where you didn't want to tell this person or you didn't want to worry that person you didn't want them to be overly concerned about you they're going through you know they're going through some things they need some things and right in the middle of that you have worries you have your own concerns and you have your own needs who do you talk to who do you talk to hallelujah that's what prayer is for you talk to God you pray to him and he deals he's there to listen and bring to four hallelujah when the communication process goes forth he's there to bring about an action in Genesis it says it was so it was so amen so check this out whether it be forgiveness strength or healing Prayer provides the necessary channel to communicate with God and receive that supernatural strength. Whether it's forgiveness, you, you need forgiveness, or you need to forgive somebody, you need strength, or you're standing in the gap for somebody else's, you need healing, or you're interceding for somebody's healing, prayer provides that necessary channel to communicate with God and receive supernatural strength and power. 
there, there is untold power and potential in prayer, y'all, uh, to God. Now, I'm talking about prayer to God. Now, I'm not talking about praying to, to Muhammad. I'm not talking about praying to Harry Krishna, but I'm talking about praying to the one who started everything. Praying to the one who spoke and said, and it was so. Amen. The one that under the greatest communicator of all, the one that doesn't even need a voice for things to happen just because of who he is. Through prayer, we invite God who created everything into our situations in which we have no wherewithal. You might have, you might feel like you're weak. The doctors may have said, uh, you're not going to make it. Listen, we're, when it's all, we, we, we are, we, we are, uh, we want to give deference to the doctors and we want to do our due diligence. Amen. Uh, as going to see who we can see. But when it's all said and done, what does God say about it? Prayer changes things, but even more, prayer changes us. Uh, prayer, so when even when you see things that are, uh, or even as you pray, they don't seem like they're changing. May, maybe then you need to just change your prayer and say, Lord, help me with this. Instead of saying, uh, help that to change. Lord, help me with what's going on. Help me with the change. Help me with what's coming on me. Help me with the challenge. Just but prayer is not just a request to God or thanks to God or even good communication. But prayer, here it comes. Is truthful communication between God and man. Prayer is truthful communication between God and man. I'm going to say it again. Prayer is truthful communication between God and man. Go to Numbers 23 and 19. 23 and 19. Truthful communication. Truth of communication. Yeah, have you ever you had a friend and you were talking and you you told them what you wanted them to know, but you didn't tell them the whole story. That wasn't truthful communication. That was skewed. That was that was bent for an outcome that you're looking for. But prayer, you oh my God, you have to tell God all about it. When you say tell God all about it, that means tell him everything. Tell him the truth numbers 23 and 19 and it says God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good you better listen you better listen God is not a man he is a spirit go with me to John 8 and 42 John 8 and 42. We're going to put these in together. Write these down and keep them for you uh, because we're dealing with the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. Prayer is truly important. Y'all got that? Uh, John 8 and 42. John 8 and 42. And it says, the children of the devil, we're dealing with that. Jesus said unto them, Jesus said again, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why you don't understand what's coming out of my mouth? Even because ye cannot hear my word, are you deaf? Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in the devil him when he spaketh a lie he spaketh of his own for he is a liar sotes greek word sotes he's a falser fire he's a falser Fire. The devil is a falsifier and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye uh, not believe me? Verse 47 says this. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. 
So uh, in uh, John Milton's poem, uh, Paradise Lost, uh, John Milton, uh, uh, the poem Paradise Lost, he refers to Satan as the embodiment of evil. He is the, Satan is the embodiment of evil. So if we go to um, uh, John 1 and 4, go to John 1 and 4, John 1 and 4, Satan is the embodiment. He is a spirit also. He's, a, he's, a, he, he's not everywhere at the same time, but he, he is the embodiment of evil. He hates you. He hates you you. He hates you. I'm talking about every one of you, whoever you are. Don't think the enemy, that you don't have an enemy. You have an evil enemy called Satan, and he desires, check this out, to be your friend. Isn't that something? John 1 and 4 and 5. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, the word brought life and his life brought light light is the key put that in your chat light is the key light he brought light to everyone the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it uh, 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 the light uh, y'all remember um, vampire movies and Dark shadows and all those things. The print. They talk about the prince of darkness. Uh huh. Yeah. No, when you talk about the prince of darkness, we are talking about the ultimate evil. We're talking about Satan. Uh, we're talking about everything that he stands for. What do you mean, the prince of dark? No word. If there's no word, there's no light. If there's no light, there's no life. If there's no life, there's no truth. And if there's no truth, there's no knowledge. I'm going to say that part again. If there's no word, there's no light. God spoke, let there be, and there was light. If there, but there has to be a word. If there's no word, there's no light. If you keep your mouth closed, hallelujah, you will sit and ponder. If you keep your mouth closed, you will, you will constantly be bound. If you keep, if there's no word, you're going to stay in the stupor that you're in. But you got to put the word to work. If there's no word, there's no light. And if there's no light, there's no life. And there, if there's no life, there is no truth. And if there's no truth, here comes, there is no knowledge. And if there's no knowledge, there is no Jesus. My God, no Jesus, no blessing. Hallelujah, just curses. Hallelujah. So it, the importance of prayer is you got to begin to put the word to work. You got to be able to speak against that thing that is holding you hostage. You got to be able to speak against that fear that has you uh, 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 crippled and have you uh, uh, bound up. You have to be able to, hallelujah, God has given us not a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Put the word to work and watch God begin. You begin to communicate with your God and watch him help you out of your situations. Hallelujah. Kirk, go to John 3 and 19. John 3 and 19. We're almost finished for now. John 3 and 19. John 3 and 19 through 20. And it says, And the judgment is based on this fact. God is light. God's light came into the world. God's light came into the world. But people loved the darkness more than light. For the actions were evil. Oh my God. You know why a lot of people don't pray? Because they don't want the light. They don't want the life. They don't want the truth. They don't want the knowledge. Some people want to be ignorant of the truth. They, they, they want to stay. But in that ignorance comes uh, a bondage. In that ignorance comes sickness unto death and eternal death. You want the life the light, you want uh, the knowledge, you want the truth, and you want God's blessings. Amen? So all who do evil hate the light 
and refuse to go near it for fear of their sins will be exposed. If, oh my God, if you're in Jesus, you hate uh, the darkness. If you're in the Lord, you should hate the things that, that are evil. Huh? They should deplore you. You should automatically want to begin to pray against those things that are not of God. Go with me to Matthew 6 and 22. Matthew 6 and 22. I hope I'm saying something to, 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 to help you today. Hallelujah. Matthew 6 and 22. The importance, the importance of prayer. While you're getting that, listen, uh, Holy Nation, we are having a Zoom meeting tomorrow, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're having a Zoom meeting. Very important. I will send a link out to you. Uh, via email or text. So look for it. Look for it. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 6 p.m. for a meeting of importance. So I want to see everybody. I want to see everybody there. Amen. 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 Matthew 6 and 22. And it says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, uh -huh, double, divided, not single, but more than that, uh, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. Let's go to the ESV version of that. This translation says, the eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If people can look you in the eye, hallelujah, they can, you know, some people, if they're hiding something, it's hard for them to look you in the eye. Train your children to look you in the eye. Look somebody in the eye when they're speaking with them. Uh, uh, but, but if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, this is a spiritual example, but even in our physical bodies, there are, there are some, some, some common health problems that can be diagnosed by the eyes. Did you know that? So your doctor may uh, have you to open your mouth, your general practitioner, open your mouth and say, ah, oh. uh, they may look in your ear. Uh -huh. They may listen to your heart uh, with a stethoscope. Uh, or, or, and then they may uh, use an otoscope to examine the eye. Uh, when you look in the eye, a lot of things uh, from a, a trained professional can tell. They can tell uh, diabetes affects the capillaries in the retina and may cause them to leak or have yellowish fluid or even bleed. High blood pressure, you can kind of check that out through the eyes. High cholesterol, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and other Autoimmune deficiencies can be uh, detected through the eyes. And even certain types of cancer can be detected by looking into the eyes. The attributes of truthful communication. Accurate. Uh, so, so your eyes, your eyes. Let me look in your eyes and see what's in there. Truthful communication. Uh, 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 so let's, let's deal with this. Attributes of truthful communication. And then we're going to get out of here. Attributes of truthful communication. Accuracy. These are attributes of truthful communication. Accuracy. Uh, knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. The uh, attributes. Sincere. Sincere. Wise. Timely. Here's another one. Timeless and compassionate. So, so these are the attributes. Accurate, truthful communication. So when you're praying to God, you need to be accurate. When you're praying to him, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to tell him what's going on with you. Amen. With your circumstance, with your situation. Uh, sincere, you need to be humble and sincere, reverent. 
You need to be wise. This is God. This is your father. He, he knows all about you. He just wants to know, do you know how to come to him? Timely. Hallelujah. Timely. Whenever you seek him. Hallelujah. Seek him while he may be find, t found. Timeless and compassionate. Yeah, uh, those, those are those things that you need to do, uh, those attributes when you are praying. The importance of prayer. How powerful is prayer? Let's see. The importance of prayer should not be underestimated. Uh, go with me to James 5 and 16. James 5 and 16. James 5. Oh, y'all can study this after we get off. James 5. The enemy didn't want us to communicate. Oh, my goodness. James 5 and 16. James 5 and 16. James 5 and 16, and, and a lot of you know this, but we're going to say this, uh, we're going to say this, James 5 and 16, and it says, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other, confess and pray, Greek word, yokomohi, or wish, uh, when you're praying for somebody, uh, you uh, wish for each other, so uh, good thing, so that you may be healed, pray for each other. Uh, 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 and 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 that that that's we're talking about a supernatural healing, even a physical healing. This right. voice and his his will, things began to happen. And it says, and pray one for another. There is no instance in a uh, 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 a confession where the penitent and the priest pray together for a pardon, but here the people are commanded to pray for each other that they may be healed. God is willing and able to heal us. Uh, we should be willing to admit the areas of our lives where we need healing. Isn't that something? Our faults. Tell God about your faults. Tell him about, or I mean faults, sins. Tell him about your sins. Time is a healer and miracles can happen, especially when God is at work uh, uh, with his people. We, let's, let's do this last one and then we'll go. 1 John 1 and 6. 1 John 1 and 6. 1 John 1 and 6. So don't forget, uh, Nation, don't forget the meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. Very important. Very important. So we look forward to seeing you. 1 John, uh, uh, 1 John 1 and 6. And it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not uh, the truth. But if we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. If we say. Him say. We say. We started with God says. Now we say. If we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess. If we say our sin, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. All other sins should be confessed in private to God that ye may be healed. We confess our sins and pray for one another in order that we may be able to make whole people in our bodies as well as our souls. So since God is light, it follows that a Christian cannot truly claim communion with him while living in darkness. As John warned us, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. So there can be only one sphere of real communion and communication with God, which is the light itself. So John insisted that uh, this is where a Christian will find that communion. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. The importance of prayer. Hallelujah. Once we align ourselves and understand that, that, that God has created us, he has so designed us, he's looking for us to operate in, in not just these bodies, but he's looking for us to operate in our spirit as he operates. He said 
those things came to pass, he wants us to say so those things can come to pass. And so, hallelujah, I don't care what situation you're in. We're going to pray in a minute. But I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care where you find yourself. I don't care who walked out on you, who walked in on you, uh, what has the time has caught up with you, time has left you, whatever the situation is. I don't know, but God knows. I know who does know, and you know. Hallelujah. And he can do anything but fail. He just wants you to put the word to work. He just wants you to say he wants you to say you can say it audibly. You can say it in from your heart. You can say it from your will. He wants you to say. He wants you to intimate. Hallelujah. He wants you to acknowledge. Hallelujah. That he is the author. He wants you to acknowledge that he can mend your broken heart. That he can set you free. That he can do all of those things that you need done. Once you begin to let him know how knowledgeable you are, how wise you are, how concerned you are, how sensitive you are, hallelujah, how loving you are, and check this out, how thankful you are for him, hallelujah, that's when God begins to, uh, 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 began to move. He begins to dispatch angels. He begins to speak a word on your behalf. He begins to heal those things. He begins to bring into alignment those things that have been put out of order. Amen. The importance of prayer. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father God, we say thank you for this day. God, I thank you for your word. 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 I thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for creating us with a will. I thank you for creating us that we may be able to communicate with you on that level. God, I thank you for that woman and that man, that boy, that girl, that mother that's standing in proxy for her children, that father that's standing in proxy for his family. God, I ask you to look upon them now in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, you take control. You have your way, God. You see and work all of those things out for your son's behalf, for your daughter's behalf. God, you work it out, God. You see, and we bind the enemy, hallelujah, the evil one, the father of lies. There's no darkness here, but there's all light. We thank you for your son, Jesus, that shines the light of salvation. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, hallelujah, hey, not about see. We thank you for that all that's going. God, we even thank you for a successful broadcast. The enemy didn't want us to communicate. The enemy didn't want us to talk to you. The enemy, hallelujah, didn't want us to thank you. But most of all, the enemy didn't want you to get back with us. And God, we thank you for that healing. We thank you for those finances. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the breakthrough that's happening in this session right now. God, we say thank you. And we call it done in your son Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Listen, I want you to do this. I want you to go out here on our uh, 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 platform and I want you to sow a faith-filled seed. Sow a faith-filled seed. I thank God for you. Sow a faith-filled seed. You can go to our Givelify uh, platform, our Cash App platform. Uh, uh, you can go to our mailbox and go to P.O. Box 3431 Bartlett, Tennessee. However you want to do that. And I want you to sow a faith-filled seed tonight or today whenever you are viewing this uh, message. Whenever you are viewing this message, I want you to go out and sow a seed into Holy Nation Ministries so that this ministry can go forth. Hallelujah. Prayers can go forth and not be hindered. Hallelujah. We thank you. Uh, money answereth all things. And we thank you for sowing seeds right now. Uh, into ministry. God, hallelujah. I thank God for you for tuning in. We went over a little bit, but we were crashing and all that good stuff. So uh, we, God gives us grace and we want you to give us grace as well. But we're getting ready to go. And until next time, now don't forget to sow that seed now. Sow a seed. Don't just watch. Don't, my, my grandmama called them 
gospel hogs. We just want, no, listen, go. Hey, if you got to write a check and mail it, put a stamp on it. Use that mailing address. If you got to uh, go and, and ask your child how to send a cash app or whatever, however you got to do that, do that, do that, and watch God bless you. I know it to be so. This is good ground. And until next time, I just want to say everything, and I mean everything, is going to be all. Everyone, thank you for visiting us on social media. Listen, if you are looking for a place where you can get the word of God for your everyday living, Holy Nation Church of Memphis is the place you need to be. Visit us on our social media. Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the Word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. And then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you, for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation, and this is good ground. We go out into the communities, and we believe in reaching the families. Uh, that is the parents, the children, the grandparents. But we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry. Just go to Giveify on, on, on our website. I think the information should be there at the bottom. Go out, sow a seed. This is good ground. We look forward to seeing you at the nation soon.